Good morning, and welcome to another edition of Coffee with Cartlaw, Alabama. I'm your host today. Uh, my name is Daryl Cartwright, and I'm an attorney in Birmingham, Alabama. I wanted to talk to you today a little bit about uh, covenants not to compete. Uh, a covenant not to compete is an agreement. A covenant means uh, an agreement, basically. Um, between usually an employer and an employee, sometimes it is between the seller of a business and the purchaser of the business and uh, a couple of other uh, minor ex uh, other areas that basically says, look, um, you agree that you will not engage in competition uh, with me, with your existing company. Uh, after the termination and severance of our relationship. Usually that's the way that it works. And a lot of people think these documents aren't valid and that could not be farther from the truth. Uh, while Alabama law is similar to many or most states in that restraints, uh, contracts in restraint of trade are generally held to be against public policy, such as a covenant not to compete, there are a number of exceptions, and generally the exceptions outnumber the rule. Uh, basically, in order for a covenant not to compete to be valid, and I'm capsulizing something in two minutes that probably should take uh, two hours to, uh, to fully investigate and develop, but basically, the employer needs to have a protectable interest in what they are trying to protect. Uh, they have some trade secrets or they have a specialized training for the employee and, or you know, something of that nature. And they take the steps to protect it. And the, the employee understands this and agrees to be bound by that covenant not to compete. Uh, Covenants not to compete are not valid against professionals, so you can't have a covenant not to compete signed by a doctor or lawyer or uh, other professionals, and they have to have that professional or that protectable type interest. So if it's a very, very low level uh, employee, generally they're not going to rise to the level of that specialized training uh, protectable interest, confidential information type of level in order for it to be a uh, true covenant not to compete uh, with a protectable interest. It must be uh, limited and reasonable in uh, geographical scope and time. So you can't have one that lasts forever in uh, worldwide, usually. Uh, it's common in many different kind of businesses for, to see something like a 50 mile radius and uh, one year or uh, maybe up to two years that they'll restricted from being able to engage in that, that type of business. In any event, if all those things are uh, in place, then a covenant not to compete can in fact uh, be valid. Uh, one of the quirk with Alabama law is that if you are a business owner and you're seeking to have an employee sign a valid and enforceable covenant not to compete, then you need to wait until after they begin work uh, in order to sign that covenant not to compete. Interestingly, I saw an attorney recently raise the issue and, and say, look, uh, there must not be consideration for that. Uh, this company did it all wrong. They uh, didn't have the employee sign the covenant not to compete before they started working. They waited until after they started working. Well, it's it's a quirk in the law, but they actually did it right. Having them sign it before they begin work renders it invalid. It's it has to be after they are beginning work or after they have already begun work. Uh, what is the consideration for that? Their continued employment. Uh, that's consideration sufficient to uh, justify that. In any event, that's probably more than I wanted to get into, but I did want to raise, uh, or did want to talk about the, a case that I'd seen recently. The uh, Supreme Court 
addressed it and uh, rendered a decision on April 23rd of 2021 uh, in the case of Boyd versus Mills. In, uh, in this case, the issue was whether a non-compete agreement that was executed in connection with the sale of a business, it doesn't always have to be employer-employee, can be with the sale of a business, business seller, business purchaser, whether that non-compete agreement terminated on the death of the individual subject to the agreement. Now, you may be like me. The first time I saw that headline or that little tagline, I was like, what? How in the world would you seek to enforce a covenant not to compete against someone who's dead? Are they really going to compete from the grave? Is that what they're doing? And that really wasn't the issue at all in, in the case. Instead, the person who paid for the covenant not to compete, uh, who, uh, who uh, sold the business, and the, uh, the purchaser had uh, uh, the purchaser and the seller had reached the agreement where uh, they agreed after they sold it, they wouldn't compete. They died. And then the purchaser was trying to get out of paying uh, additional payments. They had an installment payment agreement on the purchase of the, the deal. And they were trying to get out of having to pay what they would have to pay because they said, look, they can't compete with us anymore. Uh, they're dead and they can't compete with us from the grave. And the court held, no, that covenant not to compete agreement is still valid. In any event, I hope you got a little chuckle out of that as I did and hope you have a great day and a great rest of the week and I'll see you next time.